Alrighty. I think we're good. Hi there, everybody. Just getting this set up. Um, oh, it's Meg here. Um, I was originally going to do this on my YouTube live, um, but I don't know, I've changed the settings. Anyway, we are now here. Um, and I'll share this with you on this page. Um, and it's only going to be a 30 minute, 35 minute practice for our hips, our hamstrings and our lower back. This is a practice anybody can do and I, I really recommend it um, for anyone and everyone. And especially if you are living a lifestyle that has you quite busy and stressed um, and a person that has no time to do yin yoga. And if, if that's um, how your life is panning out at the moment, uh, it might be the time to actually grab your mat and a cushion and take 30 minutes for yourself to give back a little bit of self-care. Um, so yin yoga was something that I never gave myself space for. I was so busy um, spending time doing all the time. You know, I'd go to the gym and I'd thrash it out and burn calories and, um, you know, sweat and all that kind of jazz. And I, I definitely still do that. Um, but it's all about balance. and. It's like everything in life, if we don't have a balance between the yin and the yang, the, um, the fast and the slow and the dark and the light, etc., we very easily start to shift out of balance. So some of you might have seen the, the talk that I did um, on Redhead Wellness Century, The Collective, um, only the Thursday night just gone, which I have shared on this page, but it's also on Redhead Wellness' page as well. Um, about how we can just get stuck into this huge extent of doing all the time and what we practice grows stronger. So the busier we are, the more stress we are, the more tension we hold, the more um, that we resist, um, that all just keeps continuing to persist. So yin teaches us to pause and to slow down, but um, it is derived from traditional Chinese medicine um, and it just has so much power uh, to heal and we start to get deep in the fascia and the connective tissue um, which um, in my experience um, and, and research of this uh, practice it's pretty much the only practice that does actually get deep into that uh, connective tissue and fascia and give it permission to actually let go and sort of release its grip and tensions um, you know, the, the modern science and research states that we are in our stress state up to 150 times a day. And that means that our body is constantly in a state of fight, fight or freeze if we so choose to be. Um, and we have to become aware of that state to get ourselves out of it. And to do that, we need to pause, we need to be still. We need to take a breath in and we need to take a breath out. And that's when we can actually interrupt the, the reactivity of the, the brains and the synaptic connections to go, hang on a second, I don't need to react and respond like that. I can react and respond in a way that um, serves me better. And that is most certainly by choosing to relax and release. So this yin yoga practice um, will be only short, so I'm gonna get started. Um, all you're gonna need is a pillow or a cushion. And if you have a dressing gown strap, um, grab that, or a yoga strap is fine. Or if you have a yoga block, um, that's, that's fine too, and if you've got a, a furry friend like I do, grab one of those. And I just want to do a little shout out. I'm on my fourth, I started Sunday lunchtime onto a water fast, so two and a half days of water fasting, and this is my finishing my first day on um, a juice fast from the Healthy Cocktail. They're amazing, they're Newcastle based. Um, I have been just buzzing. Um, I, I actually woke up pretty tired this morning, and I, I, I don't post this on Instagram. I, said some really strong mantras to myself of, you know, I feel I've got loads of energy today and that I'm glowing. And I, I, I actually woke up in a bit of back pain this morning and uh, this is the third time I've been able to use a mantra and an affirmation to shift my back pain. And I have just done yoga and I've just gone to movement and infused health and I feel absolutely fucking fabulous. I'm absolutely buzzing. Elias and I were just talking about how high we actually feel. Um, 
and you do, you feel high. I've been fasting now since Sunday lunchtime, it's now Wednesday, and I feel high as a kite on life itself. It is the best feeling ever because your body just starts to detox and cleanse out all the shit that um, we, we take in. Toxicity is not just food, it's the information we, we take in everywhere. And when we do these fasts, um, the body starts to use the energy that's already stored inside of us. So anyway, I'm feeling really, really amazing. I finished on Friday, so I've still got tomorrow and then Friday. Um, so yeah, I'm really looking forward to Friday, but I'm really also looking forward to sharing this with you. So let's get started. Um, so we're actually going to start the, uh, tonight's practice, or whenever you're watching this, um, in a reclined butterfly pose. Now, you're more than welcome, if you do have a bolster, you can pop the bolster a long ways and allow yourself to lie down to the bolster. So the bolster comes about the mid part of the back. Um, you don't want to directly be onto the lumbar. Um, and then you want to let the shoulder blades melt either side of the bolster. Um, if you don't have a bolster, just lie down to the floor. That's totally fine. You can rest your head on a cushion. The soles of the feet are together and the knees are apart. As we come into this first pose of your reclined butterfly. And wherever you are, wherever you're practicing, Take these first few minutes to settle in and to let go of your day. It's so easy for us to get caught up in the thought of I should have, could have and would have. And it's also so easy for us to get thoughts up, up caught up in our thoughts of What's next? I need to get this email out. What about tomorrow? What about that appointment? Mm -hmm. What if I lose my job? What if my boss doesn't like my idea? All of that going backwards and going forward completely takes time away and energy from this moment right here. There's a really great old quote from Lao Tzu, who originally put together the Tao Te Ching, which is approximately 2,500 years old. And it's used a lot in traditional Chinese medicine and Chinese philosophy. And it is so relevant in the times we are in now. And he says, if we are living in the past, we are depressed. If we are living in the future, we are anxious. And if we are living right now, we are at peace. So every single time and moment that you catch yourself thinking, all you need to do is without judging or criticizing the thought, just gently acknowledge to yourself the words I'm thinking. And then bring yourself back to the breath. And that is the meditation. Come back to the words I know I'm breathing in. And I know I'm breathing out. Now start to let this become your practice. Breathing in, four, three, two, one. And exhale, four, three, two, one. And take 10 more breaths here. Shutting down your eyes. Allowing your knees just to flop open and be heavy. Mm -hmm. Allowing the hips to open. And let go of any resistance on your exhale. You are now here.
give five more beautiful, delicious breaths to relax. Breathe in a sense of gratitude, a sense of appreciation for your day, and for yourself, and for your physical body. And breathe out, give yourself permission to let something go. Something that you don't need to hold on to anymore. Something somebody said at work, somebody who cut you off today. You might have missed out on a job or might be even something bigger than that, something to do with a relationship, whatever it is. The more time you spend back in that or forward in that, the more boring time from the present. And it is completely irrelevant right now. Take one more breath in. I choose to let go of breath out. So as you are, use your hands to gather your knees together. And then just slowly roll to one side and end up in a fetal pose. Just push the bolster to the side. Slide onto your side and just pause here for about five breaths. Doesn't matter which way you go. Enjoy a deep breath in and a steady exhale out. Slowly pushing yourself up onto all fours. We're just going to activate into some cow cat movements. When I come into yin, I like to do this really, really slow. So start to just move your spine in any direction that feels good for you. So maybe that's just using your inhale to lift the chin and the chest and your exhale to round the spine. But it also might be moving side to side laterally. You might even find a child's pose. You might move your neck, your elbows. I invite you to close down your eyes and continue with this for another five rounds of breath. You're using your breath here to connect with your movement. Take one more breath in and a breath out. Our first shape we're going to come to is our sleeping swan pose tonight. So bolsters are really good for this and a block underneath the right butt cheek if uh, you find that their hips are rising up too much here. So deer pose is always an option um, to come into this pose with right shin forward, left leg bent and folding forward over the shin. That's her deer pose. If not, coming into our sleeping swan, you can use a bolster in front of you if you wish. The right knee is going to head over to the right side of your mat. Left leg is going to extend out the back, toe uh, untucked. And we want to actually try and just square off the hips here best possible. The right shin does not have to be parallel with the front of the mat, and I think mine will ever get there. Again, if you're feeling like the need to do this, your hips are really tight, pop a cushion or a block underneath your right butt cheek. The point of sensation here is we're stretching into the bum, the glute max, and of course deep into the hips. You'll get a little bit into your adduct, um, yeah, your adductor onto the left and of course into the hip flexor of the left as well, and a little bit into the psoas um, if you choose to stay up. So you're more than welcome to stay upright like this. If not, feel free to start to come down to your bolster or block slowly. And we, in Yin Yoga, we have um, three, three tenets, they say, or three things that make up the practice of Yin Yoga that we need to honour uh, in our practice. And, they can be some of the hardest things to do because our, our lives are so fast and so busy. So the, the first tenant is to come in at 60% only. So as we move into the practice or into the shape, it's very tempting to go further because everything in our conditioning ever since we were little kids is like, 
You know, we have, we're competing, we're winning. Uh, even at school, it's always a competition. Um, even down to popularity or swimming or football, there's always a winner as such. So we get taught and conditioned to compete and to be the best and to um, move towards perfectionism, um, which of course becomes a practice. And when we practice that for many years and we're into our mid thirties or forties, uh, that practice is so ingrained in us that we strive and we continue to perfect in everything we do. So Hidi Yoga is the opposite to that. We, we There is no end point, there is no goal, and we don't strive. You actually practice letting go. So we come into this first point of 60%, the first point where we feel sensation. So I'm feeling this most definitely into my my glute and my, my hip and then we pause and then the second tenant is we stay for time so we allow ourselves to settle in for a certain amount of period of time uh, anywhere from nine seconds to ten minutes but tonight we'll do that three minutes and it's probably be three to three and a half if at any point you come in too deep, you'll know because you're all you want to do is get out of it. And that's the ego wanting to take over and you know get a little deeper or try to get the most out of the pose. But the, the most out of the pose comes when you let go and you surrender and you give permission for the tissue and uh, connective tissue and fascia to let go of their hold on your muscles, onto the tissues, the ligaments the tendons, and of course, overall, the whole body just starts to soften, becomes less rigid, and a, a lot more supple. The third tenet is we be still, so that we can get deep underneath the layers of the muscle. We need to be as still as possible so that we're not fidgeting or squeezing our muscles or tensing. And that stillness, is exactly where the magic happens, not just in this practice, but off our mat, giving ourselves permission to pause. Take five more breaths, wherever you are is perfect. Try not to pay attention to what I'm doing here. Tune into your body and how it feels for you. You're very much look different on each and every single person. Take one more breath in and a long exhale out. We're going to very slowly roll onto our right hip and always transition slowly and then swing your left leg around. So the left leg is coming out in front, the right heel is now onto the inner thigh of the left and this is where you can use your strap if you need so we're going to get into the hamstrings a little bit here i'm going to turn my torso to face my left leg and you can bend your knee if you need to here and we're simply going to fold now if you have a bolster you can um, put your bolster here and fold forward using the support um, you can use blocks as well please find what works for you Right, to support here, but again, it's effortless. So as you take a breath in, allow yourself not to grab onto anything, just to strive or push, but just to fold. So to the first point of sensation, and of course, what you will feel is a stretch into the hamstring um, of the left leg, right down into the back of the knee joint and possibly down into the gastro muscle in the calf. You may even get this a little in your Achilles. Uh, you can point or flex your foot or just keep it soft. We're also experiencing beautiful flexion in the spine. I quite like to rest my head here as well for a while. So you choose whatever works for you. I encourage you to let everything go here where we resist the need to hold on to your leg or to pull yourself closer in. Over time, that's when gravity will take over. 
It's about appreciating the ride and being really content and having gratitude for exactly where we're at. If we are continuing to constantly look for things to better ourselves, if we're constantly chasing a new goal or if we're constantly looking for something else, you know, for this, this constant um, gratification almost of what we think we need for life, for us to be happy. We're always going to be looking. That gratification must come from ourselves and we already have it within us. Nothing external, outside of us, no job, no car, no partner or no, um, no amount of money or what we do as status or what we own will ever bring us happiness if we're looking to heal something inside of us with the external. Those things are beautiful to have, but we must find that happiness within. And it comes from that non-attachment. It comes from letting go of that and just appreciating exactly what's here, just as it is. You know, that goes down to everything. I used to constantly think that my body had to look a certain way for me to be happy. I had to uphold this image of, you know, this perfect body that I was constantly chasing and I was never happy with. And I would spend all my time going backwards, like punishing my body and my thoughts and thinking, what if I look like that? I would honestly spend so long in those depressive thoughts of, you know, what if I did differently or why did I eat so much there or what do I need to do tomorrow to burn off all that food? I shouldn't have eaten that much. It was such a bad thing to do. I was constantly in self-sabotage. And then along with that battle of going backwards, I was constantly going forward. What are people going to think? What if he doesn't like me that way, you know? What if I look like this way when I lose 10 kilos and I'm going to be happier? All that kind of stuff. It's so irrelevant and it takes so much energy. And if we're in a battle of self-sabotage with ourselves, we are constantly practicing that. And that's going to become our practice until we decide to pick it up and change it. Take one more breath in and a full exhale out. Engage your belly, please very slowly bring yourself back up to seated. Now we're going to come into a beautiful deep hip stretch here and we're going to bring that left shin and we're going to place the left foot on top of the right knee, coming into square pose. Now, if this pose doesn't work for you, don't worry, it didn't work for me for a long time too. You might want to bring that left, uh, sorry, right heel to your bum and cross over the left knee and come into shoelace pose. If that doesn't work for you, then I invite you to just simply cross your legs with the left shin in front and you can sit on a towel or a cushion here. So just a, a regular cross-legged pose. So we're getting into our hips. So wherever you are is totally fine. Three different variations here. This juice is fucking delicious, by the way. It's in my sixth one today from the Healthy Cocktail on my juice plus uh, for the first day. I don't know what's in it, but it's really yum. I so recommend it. Um, so we're going to, again, use bolsters, use whatever you've got here to support you. And all we're going to do here is take a big breath in and then fold forward on the exhale. So if you don't want to use any support, um, you might want to find a bullock for support too. That's cool. Try not to let your shoulders do this. Try to soften your shoulders up. I'm not going to talk too much more on this practice. I want you guys to just find it a little bit quiet. I talk a lot um, and my other practices are for that. So wherever you are, just know that we're not here to experience pain. Uh, uncomfortable is perfect, but pain is not. Always come into that point of 60% and then let gravity take over and surrender. Relax and release. If you find yourself battling with your thought, you will because that's what the mind does. The moment you acknowledge that you are thinking, come back to the words, I know I'm breathing in. 
And I know I'm breathing out and that brings you back to the present moment and that's all you need to do. And 100% that is the easiest form of meditation because no other moment matters but right now. Let yourself go. Ten more breaths here. Notice if you're fidgeting, notice if your body is tensing or wondering how long you have left. Just be in a place where you can stay, come up out of it a little bit if you need to. Notice if you've gone too far. Three more breaths. Full breath in, full breath out, engage your belly a lot there. Slowly push into the hands and kind of stack your spine one vertebrae at a time, very, very, very gently. Take your time to come up to see it. And you might, if your foot was over, just pick it up and bring it in front of you and bring your feet hip distance apart, hands behind, very slowly, just knock the knees. Side to side, it is so important to move slow in the end. Um, we experience what's called creep into the connective tissue um, when we hold poses for a long amount of time. And that's where we experience the length into the tissue and the fascia. And if we move too quickly, the body's not ready. Um, my teacher, Truth Robinson, described this creep as like a gummy bear snake. Um, and it kind of just stretches out, but it, it does eventually come back to its structure. And that's what happens when we sort of shift and rebound in between the poses. The um, tissues have to reorganize themselves safely so that we can then move into the next shape. So as a counter pose between all of this, we've been forward folding a lot. I'm going to recommend a supported bridge, a really lovely one for the spine. You can use a cushion, you can use whatever you like if you've got a yoga block. Most people have a yoga block these days. Use that. Also spine. Feet coming down to the ground, sliding the uh, yoga block underneath your sacral area. Oh, it feels so good for my lower back. And letting the, the body just rest here. Um, some of you may like to extend your legs in a moment, which will get deeper into the hip flexors and the psoas. But this is a really nice release for the spine. So I did mention that we were going to do our hips, our hamstrings and our spine. So in your supported bridge, you can either keep your arms as they are a good little above your head. If you are wanting to get into the psoas and the hip flexor, please do this slowly as you extend your legs out long. Um, again, some people might um, not particularly uh, like this version of the extension into bridge. If your back is very tight and aggravated, you may just like to keep your feet onto the floor. Um, you will know this is a very intuitive practice so take the, the option that works for you, letting yourself go long. 
making sure, of course, the block is not on the, on the lumbar region. We are very much on the sacrum here, so we are being completely supported. And then just let yourself go, surrender and breathe. I've been sharing this quote a lot from Brené Brown over the last week. We can hold, we can hold a lot of tension in our bodies from trying to people please, trying to make something right for somebody else, trying to gain approval, trying to win likes, to try and make friends, to try and get lovers or partners to like us more, or whatever it might be. It takes energy and it is all irrelevant. The more that you are giving your time trying to people please and gain approval from others, you zap time and energy from yourself. And it is really exhausting. I spent nearly 30 years over doing that. And now just letting that go, I, I cannot begin to describe how much energy I have every single day. And the quote goes like this. She says, authenticity is letting go of who you think you should be and embracing fully who you really are. Authenticity is letting go of who you think you should be and embracing fully who you are. Just one more minute here, five to six more breaths, really so. Take a full breath in and exhale. Overview with the legs extended long, slowly creep your feet back in. And meeting us all in a supported bridge, very slowly engage your core, push into the heels, pull the block out from underneath you. And just lying onto the ground and then touching the knees together, the feet go as wide as your mat. And we find tiki pose and internal rotation of the hips. Gently bring your knees in, giving yourself a squeeze or a hug. Yes. And you can either roll to your side or slowly rock and roll up. Keeping the chin tucked in to protect the lower back if you're rocking and rolling. Nice massage for the spine. And we're going to come to find our pigeon pose. So if this one more side. So the left shin is going to come forward. And the right foot extends out the back. Again, if you know you're tight in the hips, use a block and place it, not that hip, underneath your left uh, sit bone or oblique your left glute. Use a bolster, use bricks, use whatever you need. You might even be staying up here in your king pigeon. But take a breath in. And as you exhale, start to surrender. Just find where you need to be. You know, nature is our, our biggest teacher, nature and our bodies. And our bodies are nature, we are nature. We have really pulled away from that so much in the world we live in. Everything is fighting for our attention, social media, advertisements. The expectations, uh, rules, hierarchy, roles, we move away from our true selves and we start becoming these game players. We start putting in these personas, we start acting certain ways around certain people. 
And our ego loves it. It loves the attention, it loves the gratification. But it doesn't like it when we're present. Our ego never likes being present. It likes to thrive on the old stories of the past, the old limiting beliefs, the not good enough stories that we have created over time. And they cause these blockages inside of us, these samskaras. And every time we're triggered outside of us in our environment or by somebody, our ego loves to play on that. It brings up this old story like it was yesterday and it hurts and it feels scary and we run or we numb from it. The ego will very quickly tell us we can, you know, easily go and um, go and have a drink or go and have a cigarette or go and do this or go shopping or, you know, take this, take this drug, do this, whatever, because it'll hit, um, it'll get a dopamine hit because it knows that it can win from there and continue to play on that story. And all we're doing is strengthening that synaptic connection neurally to just make that story stronger and stronger. We just push it down, we numb it, in the hope that one day it goes away. When we come into the present moment, the ego really has nowhere to play. So it's not about pushing these old stories down and these old thoughts and old beliefs and old limitations, five more breaths. It's about letting them come up when they come up and letting the ego sit to the side and say, you know what, thank you for coming up. How can I heal you? What is it that you need? Take a breath in and a breath out. Slowly rolling to your left side, very, very gently and slowly. We start to swing that right leg around. So we're now coming into that hamstring stretch. And again, um, you can always lie on your back with this one and use the strap and hold the leg. Um, and shoulder to the side, but it's, it's pretty simple. You can use a strap to hold on getting into the hamstrings. This one is pretty accessible for everybody though. So that left heel goes on the inner thigh uh, of the right. You can use a bolster, please, to support yourself as you fall. Do not square your hip, uh, no, your torso off to that extended length. Take a full breath in and a full breath out to fall. So of course on the flip side to our ego wanting to play in the past, it also is really, really good at playing in the present, uh, in the future. Um, some of the scenarios um, that might be familiar are things like worrying about what's going to happen in the part in the future, like what's going to happen if I lose my job, what's going to happen if we go back into another lockdown, what's going to happen if my partner doesn't like my hair, what's going to happen if we break up, what's going to happen if my, my kids don't get into the school, whatever it might be. And it loves to play on this backward and forward into that anxiety, that doubt and that fear. Um, and again, we can become addicted to that and become the victim of those bouncing forward and back because we, we hang out there so much and the ego makes it feel like this is real fast. So again, giving ourselves permission to come back to this present moment is really uplifting your self-care and your self-worth. You're going, you know what? I choose to come back to now and be completely present in now. Because again, this is the only moment that matters. No amount of going backwards into things that have happened in the past are going to change what's happened. It is what it is. The quicker we learn to accept that and go, you know what, I'm here right now, it becomes so much easier. We've all been through shit, every single one of us. Some bigger waves than others, 100%. But it's not a competition. Whatever we've been through, we've been through. We are here now. 
And what happens past this moment? None of us have any control over that. We may not have tomorrow, and that's the truth. So how would you talk better to yourself? How would you think better to yourself? How would you offer gratitude to yourself and what you have around you right now if there was no tomorrow? I always come back to that. That makes me look around and wonder and go, you know what, fuck yes, this is good. Even on those shitty days, I'm like, thank you for the experience. I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you for the lessons. Thank you for the tough moments. Thank you for the bits where I felt awkward and uncomfortable or experienced pain. I know it's just a memory. And they say that this too shall pass. And it does. Take a breath in and a breath out. Slowly coming all the way up. Going to our last seated pose before we come down to the ground. Again, heaps of different options here. So you can come into square pose, which is bringing that right heel onto that left knee. Square pose, but again, it took me years and years and years to get there. Um, uh, yeah, I used to be not so long ago, very, very unflexible and very tight and rigid from all my stress and body image issues that I had myself. I was very caught in my head and my ego, and I held it in my traps, my body and my hips. Um, shoelace pose, if you would, if that feels good for you, again, support your hips or your bum with a cushion if you need. Just make sure both sit bones are on the floor or simply cross your right shin in front of your left and forward fold. And again, hips carry a lot of emotion and tension, is what I just said. Okay, cool, you're going to be my boss girl. So wherever you are, um, give yourself permission to let go. This can be a pretty intense pose and we can very easily become rigid. So this practice of relaxing and releasing is really tuning into your physical body and go, oh, can I soften? And the more you do that here, the more you then do that outside when you become rigid in a situation or an environment where someone pushes your buttons. And instead of reacting and biting back and, and buying in, you just let it go. Turn to your breath at any moment and find yourself preoccupied with thought. Five more breaths here again. Full breath in. Full breath out. Very gently make your way up. Take your time. And just taking your time to lie down into your back so everyone has a little pet over here. <laughs> um, we're going to come into a supine twist for our spine. So, again, moving slowly to come down to your backs. We're going to turn on our left side and bring the right knee over to the left so that your hips are stacked. That right foot can touch down on the ground or it can just hover. But I want you to try and feel your right shoulder open so your arms are going out to a T. Again, you can support that leg. One of my favorite things is to support that with a, uh, a block or a bolster. But try to almost unwind your torso so that that 
Right and left shoulder blade is on the ground and we'll spend five breaths here in a supine twist. As I remove the doll hair from my face. And then just try to relax into it. If you're re-watching this on YouTube or as a replay, feel free to pause the video. Obviously I can't pause it here if you're live, but if you feel you need longer in a supine twist tonight, or whenever you're watching this, just hit the pause button at any time and take as long as you need. Take a breath in. And then exhale, release. Very slowly, you can start to bring your right foot back. Neutral. Pause for a moment, reset the hips. I like to tuck my right hip under first so that the joint stack left knee goes over to the right. And then, like a corkscrew, kind of peel yourself over that left shoulder on the ground. Right shoulder on the ground. Soften. You're my yoga teacher, Manu. So my mentor, when I did my yoga teacher training, he shared also this quote from Ratsu. Watch your thoughts, but they become your words. Watch your words, but they become your actions. Watch your actions, but they become your habits. Your habits become your character, and your character becomes your destiny. And it's from that quote that these are the basis of where I'm writing my book from. And if I can change my thoughts of self-sabotage and putting myself down and low self-esteem and low self-worth and unworthiness, then anyone can do that as well. Take one more breath in and a breath out. And it's now time for your Shavasana or pentacle pose as they call it in yoga. I love to slide a bolster underneath my knees here for support if you're on a blanket, grab a blanket. Um, and don't miss this part. This is, this is the, like, this is what it's all about. Where so often in such a hurry we miss this and again we miss the causes in life and we just keep going and we, we start to lose our in intuitive nature as to tuning in on what we need. So let yourself just lie on the ground, let your whole body soften and relax. You can place your hands either by your side or in your heart like what I'm doing. And shut down your eyes. Give yourself this permission and the more you give yourself permission to pause and be still and nurture and look after your body from the inside out allow yourself to shift into your rest and digest your parasympathetic nervous system you'll also give permission for others to do the same And this is only a short practice tonight, but it's near the end of it. This is close to the end. Take 
little time here. You find yourself constantly in a hurry or constantly in a rush to get to the next thing. Then make it your practice to pause a little longer. If you're with me on this live, start to wiggle your toes. And start to make it a habit to say thank you to your physical body and let it feel into it, let it feel good. You might even want to touch your body or give yourself a hug. I really like to just give myself a little bit of a squeeze, whatever feels really nice. Even touching my tummy, places where I used to touch before and used to have so much hate and anger. So just make it feel good here and give yourself a smile, maybe a hug. And come into a state of so much gratitude and appreciation. You have two feet on a heartbeat and you just need to feel permission to practice here. Roll to your favourite side, possibly your left if this was at night, so you can come into that more feminine energy. Beautiful opportunity to give yourself a little bit of love here. And if it's not love, if love isn't available to you, and it wasn't available to me for a long time, I used to tell myself I choose to be kind. And that mantra came with me for many years until I could start to practice what it really meant to self-love. So we come all the way up to sitting. Oh, take your time. There's no rush. If you want to sit on a, a bolster or a cushion, please feel free. That's okay, we'll do that. Let's go do a little meditation here to finish. Um, so just finding somewhere where you're comfortable, um, placing your hands down to the ground if not up to a seat. Feeling where you need to go here, that in that plank, just here. Just start to relax your shoulders. Maybe you just move your head side to side. Notice any other areas of your body that are holding tension. to draw attention to your face and starting to feel like your eyebrows are melting away. Notice the skin on your forehead soften. Feel your cheeks, the left and the right cheek that morning. Notice how the breath just touches onto the top of the lips as we breathe out. on the inhale how the air feels quite cool. Notice the positioning of the tongue and the roof of your mouth. Allow your shoulders to drop down a little bit more with each exhale. Feel the muscles in the upper back retract around the scapula kind of releasing their grip from usually being quite active in our day-to-day -day Western life. Notice how the chest rises and falls with your breath. You might even be able to pay attention to the expansion of your rib cages up and out. Allow your belly to be soft and loose. So be completely letting go of any help or tension here. Come to your left and your right hip, just let them really sink down into the earth wherever you are. Feel the heaviness and weight of your femur bone into the patella and then down into the shins. All feet to soften. You might even take a moment to spread your toes. Give them a little bit of love and space. And on your next breath in, I want you to breathe in how you want to feel when you leave this practice tonight. So simply breathing in the words, I feel. 
here. And that might be calm, it might be relaxed. It might be forgiveness, it might be happiness. It might be even to feel less stressed here, that might be a feeling of this happier moment we have. And as we exhale, exhale the words, I choose to let go of, and let's hold it. So breathing in, I feel, feel it in your body. Don't resist it. Say something that resonates with you. A slight pause at the top of the inhale, and as we exhale, exhale the words, I choose to let go of, and let's hold it. You might be worrying about something, you might be guarding something. You might be anxious about something that hasn't happened yet. I guarantee you, most of the times, none of that stuff ever happens. So let it go. Take five more breaths in that space. By concentrating on the breath, we're not concentrating on the thoughts. So many times I hear in there myself, I can't meditate, my mind is too busy. It is not about quieting your mind. You'll never ever be able to do that. It's about shifting your attention from your thoughts to something else. And in this case, the breath. One of the most easiest forms of meditation there is. Anyone can do it. All you need to do is just find a little space. And every single moment you find yourself back to thought and you look without judging, without criticizing it, without getting caught up in the story. Come back to those words. And now I'm breathing in. And now I'm breathing out. It's the last time for this evening, breathing the words I feel. Always hold the breath in. And a slow exhale, I choose to let go of. Let it go. And then when you feel ready, just gently bring your hands in your hearts. And maybe rolling your shoulders back, taking any moves that feel good for you. I'm really grateful for you guys jumping on. I apologize for the little mix up with YouTube, but this will go onto my YouTube as well. Always take your time to move slowly after yin. Um, you really shift yourself into your parasympathetic nervous system. You can feel it. You can feel that change in energy. And take that energy with you to bed, to sleep. Try not to get on your phones too much or do anything time intensive. You don't get back to your emails and stuff like that. Use this time to nurture and get back to nature with yourself. Um, and know that that feeling that you just experienced into that parasympathetic nervous system is always there. Um, we just need to pause and breathe to start to activate that. So thank you so much for jumping on. I do feel I've gone over 30 minutes, but I really appreciate um, you guys that are here. Um, yeah, Tony, cool. Thank you. <laughs> um, Simon, thanks for jumping on, guys. I really appreciate it. Um, but yeah, jump on my YouTube, there's heaps of videos on there. I'd so appreciate if you liked and subscribed so that I can actually um, start to get paid by YouTube so I can spend more time writing my book, Watch Your Language. Thanks to everyone, have an amazing night.